CCT prices slashed effective immediately. VIC SA hosts Mix and Mingle. Honorable Van Der Poel lashes out and the Premier responds. And Face App causing major security concerns around the world. These and more stories when 284 News returns. How oh, may I assist you? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with Hero Bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top-Up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Hello? Wait, you had a long time. Yeah. You say you were sick? What happened to our wedding rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pier Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take to Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, I see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Welcome everybody, it's Friday, July 19th, 2019. I'm Ron Grant. And I'm Javon Wilson. It's been a busy day, but it's Friday. The weekend is finally here, so we have a lot in store for you. Topping our newscast today, Team CCT has been working around the clock, continuously making improvements to their network infrastructure to provide customers with an even better product experience. Our efforts have since resulted in the increased capacity for consumers and the ability to offer better pricing and increased savings, which we can now pass on to our customers, which yes. is great news. I'm Super so excited exciting. to be making this announcement. Pricing for residential internet packages, LTE 2 and LTE 3, have been lowered immediately as a result of this achievement. LTE 2, which was $199, is now reduced to $149, and LTE, <laughs> uh, big deal, man, uh, LTE 3, which was $299, now, now reflects a cost of $189. Existing customers will automatically take advantage of these new prices on their August first invoice. Jovan, this is great news for us. Uh, I think CCT, as we approach not only the 65th, but as we work together with our customers daily to meet their needs, this is quite an accomplishment for I, us. I definitely agree with that. And we are the home code company, so uh, we have to set the pace. Yeah, and as like you said, it ties in perfectly with the 65th celebration or emancipation celebration. I'm very also proud of the fact that we are taking into consideration the needs and the financial constraints of this important. country. And that is what CCT is all about. Now, CCT's chief executive officer, Mr. Everett, Penn expressed in uh, recent comments, in a changing world where customers are demanding more internet capacity, we have decided to make this capacity more affordable for customers. CCT is committed to not only continually improving internet capacity, but also aggressively pricing telecommunications to facilitate the development of our territory. In addition, we are committed to being the premier internet provider in the Virgin Islands, and we believe that the price change is at this juncture is, is an integral part uh, for the customer experience. Uh, CCT stands with the community in preserving and keeping culture alive in the British Virgin Islands and is proud to be a major sponsor of the uh, BVI 65th festival anniversary. To learn more about CCT, please visit us at CCTBVI uh, at www.cctbvi.com or on our Facebook page at CCTBVI, uh, and that's where you'll find us. Great, great news coming out of uh, CCT today. And if you want to celebrate with us, be sure to join us tonight yes, at Island Sizzle. CCT is hosting our Top Up Turn Up Party to celebrate this major, major milestone. Moving right along, the recently revamped and revived Virgin Islands Civil Service Association is hosting a mix and mingle next Wednesday at Bamboucher. And of course, you are invited. We caught up with Sasha Flax, the newly appointed president of the interim executive body, who had this to say. On behalf of the Virgin Islands Civil Service Association Interim Board, I would like to take this time to invite all members of the BVI Civil Service to 
the Virgin Islands Civil Service Association meets and mingle on Wednesday, July 24th at 5.30 at Bamboucher. Um, the Virgin Islands Civil Service Association strives to be a change agent within the civil service. We want to continue to build the capacity and improve conditions um, for the Civil Service Association, and we can only do this with the help of all the members of the Civil Service. So I would like to invite everyone to come out. Let's start. Let's have a good time and start to effect change in the Virgin Islands Civil Service. Thank you. I'm really proud of this um, association. We know that late last year, um, September, the association was revived. Um, we also know of them meeting with the new body, rather yes. meeting with the deputy governor, to discuss quite a number of issues affecting the civil service. Um, health and safety was definitely one of the, one of the topics discussed, Rod. It's very important. We do know since post-arm, especially, a lot of our civil servants were forced to work in deplorable conditions. Um, and salary also came up as part of that meeting. Um, I think one observed mentioned that civil servants would have gone seven years without a salary increase and that is essentially crazy. <laughs> We're also uh, well aware of the injustices suffered due to unpaid increments. Fortunately, we saw the government coming forward to deal with two out of those three increments owed. Um, but if we are to piggyback a little bit, when it comes to civil servants um, in the BVI, I think one of the things to echo is reform. Mm -hmm. um, are we getting the best service from the civil service? I know since, the again, the new government came into power, and I'm sure po uh, even before that, um, our ministers have been making strides to ensure that there's enough training and workshops available to bring our service up to par. And also, by way of the public service, customer service, virtual box, the mm -hmm. public can now rate those civil servants um, and 12 persons were already honored by way of of that customer service well, workshop. Within the past years, Jovan, we've uh, come a long way as it pertains to holding the civil servants accountable. Of course, you would know that there is the body that um, persons can now go to, the Complaints Commission, uh, where persons now can go to and make uh, complaints regarding the civil service right. and, and not be uh, feeling as though they're going to be um, you know, taken advantage of because of their concerns. Right. So we have different measures that are coming in place that absolutely afford us the opportunity to hold our civil servants accountable. And they continue to work very hard, so we commend them on a job well done. And with happy, uh, with better service comes yes. uh, better compensation as well. So we're looking forward overall to the reform. Um, so I'm very happy about this association being revamped, and I do wish this union much success. All right, in still the ahead, Mark Vantapool lashes out at the government, and Premier Ford responds. A news coming your way after this commercial break. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question. It would read this mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services. One-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Welcome back viewers, you're watching 284 News. By now we are, are, we are now all aware, sorry, of the brazen rant that implicated quite a number of government ministers, of course, from the Honorable Mark Van mm -hmm. Tepool, um, and even the Speaker of the House of Assembly, but perhaps one of the most alarming allegation question, the Premier's security, and if it is warranted. Now, back in April of uh, this year, sorry, uh, the Premier revealed in the House of Assembly daunting revelation yes. that by that time he had received three major death threats. He made his revelation um, and he also mentioned that the commission of police um, also knows of uh, 
those trends. Yes, now, what's funny is Honorable Mark Van Tepoel, in his rant mm -hmm. recently at the House of Assembly, he said the commissioner, he, ha he knows from reliable source that the commissioner has no record um, of this threat. Well, let's, uh, let's pause there for a minute, Jovan. He mentioned that, but in, in, in truth and actuality, mm -hmm. as a member of the media, um, in, in when he raised those points, he really and truly brought into uh, accountability because to date we have not received any reports uh, from the police commissioner confirming one the threats or that an investigation is ongoing on the threat. So it's almost uh, a tit for tat as in his word against. And if in fact, one would wonder if it in fact is true, then why hasn't the commissioner of police uh, come out and made a statement in regards to uh, these allegations? Well, 284 Media made it our priority to reach out to the commissioner of police. And um, he said this, and I quote, I cannot and will not make any comments regarding security or threats in relation to the premier or any minister of government, end of quote. Interesting, very interesting, interesting response <laughs> coming uh, from him. Well, I guess he's not allowed to respond at this Perhaps time. Perhaps he isn't. Um, but it, it is quite alarming, this issue. We know for sure this is the first time in the history of politics in the BVI that we're seeing a security detail being warranted. Yes. And I think it, it really is starting to bother a lot of people. Um, and there are a lot of questions that come into play. Uh, Mr. Vantapool, Honorable Vantapool, rather, questioned if this privilege, again, does it extend to the Premier's office? Does this privilege roll on uh, beyond his tenure? Mm -hmm. um, would other uh, Premiers be afforded the privilege of security? And we have to take into consideration where we are financially in the, in the, at this juncture in the BVI. Can we afford five million dollars for security over the next four years? Well, you asked the question, can we afford it? I asked the question, can we afford to make it seem as though uh, national security is actually a problem in the BVI? I think that is the daunting question and that is the single uh, question that needs to be answered. Are we portraying an image that's not necessarily true? And if so, that needs to come into question. And Those it might thoughts. be instigating some level of fear because um, Honorable Van Tepoel also did mention that he was at a funeral and the security were there and I'm sure it cost some amount yeah, to... A little bit um, of hovering in, in, you know, in the presence of person. So we understand his concerns. All right, well, Honorable Foy did respond. Um, but outside of that, uh, some persons were of the opinion that his statements didn't necessarily address some of the rants, some of the allegations mm -hmm. in Honorable Van Tepoel's rant, but we'll talk about that a little, a little bit on. I think what's sad about this situation, however, Ron, in situations like these in general, is like while we continue to fight and bash each other on the local scene, we often forget that some of the key players on the international scene are looking in and conspiring to take advantage of that division. And we really have to be careful about the image we're portraying. And while, yes, some of us mean well, we need to be very mindful of our right. approach. No, I and think how you're absolutely it right. Yeah. The beautiful British Virgin Islands. All eyes are on us. All right. There was no regard for the truth or facts as outrageous fabrication and malicious falsehood formed the base of Mr. Vanapool's fictional play. This was clearly a pre-planned, stage-managed affair that was designed to seek maximum attention and grab news headlines. During the course of his slanderous rant, Mr. Vanapool attacked several prominent persons and entities, especially in the private sector, in what was a clear agenda to destabilize and dislocate the government's efforts at reviving the economy by providing jobs for the people of the territory via work issued legitimately to local contractors. Mr. Vanderpool's allegations and conduct were baseless and tasteless. It was all part of a plan to hijack the House of Assembly and distract from the magnanimity and graciousness of the occasion in light of the government's decision not to pursue the appeal in Mr. Vanderpool's case in the public interest. It is a pity that Mr. Vanapool chose this occasion of his swaying in to try to score cheap political points. He simply could not rise to the occasion and conduct himself as a statesman. I wish to make it abundantly clear that I have nothing to hide. My hands are clean and my heart is pure. You, the people of the Virgin Islands, are formed this when you choose to elect me and the members of my government to office on February 25th. Despite having heard these stale, trumped-up accusations before, it is passing strange that Mr. Vanapool's preferred course of action is to mount his soapbox and attack all and sundry, including contractors, the police service, 
the Director of Public Prosecutions, the Supervisor of Elections and the Elections Office, and the people, without giving a second thought to damage and hurt that his words could cause to innocent Virgin Islanders and to our national economy. His preposterous allegations will adversely affect the reputation and integrity of the local construction sector and discourage the use of local contractors with the attendant benefits of job creation and stimulation of the demand. And viewers, as you just listened, in a detailed response to Mark Vantipool's speech earlier this week, leader of the government business, premier and minister of finance, the Honorable Andrew Foy, has addressed the territory in relation to Vantipool's alaming plarms that he claims, sorry, that he, Premier Foy, is involved in money laundering and, among other things, uh, contractual improprieties since becoming the leader of government business. Foy believes that Tuesday's uh, tirade of abuse uh, delivered outside of the House of Assembly by newly sworn in member Mark Vantapool undermines the local construction sector, the national economy, and the territory's image. In a public response on Thursday, Foy described Vantapool's rant as a reckless uh, smear campaign aimed at assassinating the reputation of him, the Premier, and several others. Now, there's a few things that we need to take into consideration here, Jovan, that were brought about in uh, the Premier's response. One of the things he made clear is that he has no intention of uh, suing for defamation of character, which is very interesting. He made clear to say that he does not know if other persons might be uh, doing that or wish to do that. But on his side and the government side, they do not wish to uh, venture into that because it's a waste of time. Now, I agree with him in a certain sense because we've just come out of a, a court battle between the Speaker and mm -hmm. Vantapool in regards to mm -hmm. him being uh, eligible right. to sit. We and now, if we, were to, yeah, if we were to re revisit that and go back into the courts, it would put the people of the territory, along with the Fort District residents, back into another loophole where, again, you know, it's we're just seeing back and forth. Back and, and it forth. puts that as a, at a standstill. We have real exactly. business to get to. But, however, what is interesting as well, if he were to sue for a defamation of character, one of the things that would be brought into account is that he would basically have to rehash the events of uh, 2003, the allegations of 2003. You basically um, have to go back and rehash and bring it up in order to defend yourself. Right. There's a lot of allegations are always out there. People are... Uh, uh, from every government. Yeah, from every government. They say persons uh, have done, you know, different stuff. But in order to prove it, it, the facts have to be brought to the forefront. So I think it's very interesting that we see. But when I look and assess the situation, Joe Vaughn, this investigation took place in 2003. Uh, the Honorable Foy has run for election several times, several times including over. up to 2019. Mr. Vantapool, as well as other political candidates, have not publicly challenged him as a candidate or as a leader who is unable to run because of these allegations. So this is 16 years later, okay? And we're now hearing of these allegations from one of Foy's colleagues, but not in the most diplomatic way. And you know what's funny about this? We just came out of election season. Mm -hmm. I think if there is a point in time to bring anything up, it would definitely be then, uh, because you want essentially the members of our electorate to be privy to all, all this of, information. Definitely. Right. So I think it coming up now, um, I'm not sure what to make of it, especially in the way that it was delivered. Well, I'll tell you this. It reminds me, and I hate to use it as an example, but it reminds me of the United States where we see a lot of celebrities and uh, public figures, whether it's in politics or just in the community. They are now facing charges of allegations that took place 20 plus years, decades ago. And conveniently so. Right. And conveniently <laughs> so, they're now being held accountable. Mm -hmm. So it kind of brings you into the thought process of, you know, the the idea and the thought process behind persons bringing these allegations. We can't say if they were true or not. Right. We would hope they're not. But if, in fact, it, they are true, can we just take a look at the timing? 16 years since uh, these allegations were brought in 20, 2003, and we're now resurfacing again. What's the motive behind we it? We just want to make sure that whatever is coming to the forefront is inspired and instigated by pure intention Indeed. and for the ultimate good of persons in the British Virgin Islands. Up next, Honorable Neville Sheep Smith exempted despite conflict of interest and the FACE app sparks major security risks. More news after this commercial break. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? 
contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages. Welcome back, viewers. The leader of government business has again come under fire again, this time for preparing to move a motion to exempt Deputy Speaker Neville Sheep Smith from having to vacate his seat since Smith, who is the first-time legislator, and his company have been contracted by the government. The motion is listed on the order paper of the fourth sitting of the first session of the fourth House of Assembly, which resumes on July 23, 2019. Smith is named as one of the directors of Frontline Systems, a company that provided sound and staging services for the recently held Buju Banton show, as well as St. John Carnival, and is again providing those services for the upcoming 65th Emancipation Festivities. Now, Jovan, here are a few facts. The, according to the Constitution, Section 67 of the Virgin Islands, an elected member of the House shall vacate his or her seat if the member becomes a party to contract with the government of the Virgin Islands for or on account of the public service, or if any firm in which the member or is become a partner, or company of which the member is or becomes a director or manager becomes party to a contract with the government of the Virgin Islands. Nonetheless, in that same section 67 of the same constitution, it indicates that if in the circumstances it appears just to do so, the House of Assembly may exempt an elected member from vacating his or her seat, which is exactly what we see taking place. Now, in the past, Premier Foy has publicly uh, stood against former administrators for engaging in the very same practice, which is simply contracting and giving business to elected members. Sources in the Foy administration have been extremely tight-lipped as to the upcoming motion and whether or not this could have or should uh, be taken place. We hear a lot of words, Jovan, accountability, mm -hmm. transparency, and good governance. And I honestly think that at the end of the day, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, we, we talk about it, but we really de new, do need to put uh, certain measures in place that would allow persons to be un held accountable. And it's, it's simply this, either you don't give elected officials contracts or you stop allowing them to be exempted from the process because it, you're saying one thing, but you're doing another thing. For example, if all nine district representatives uh, were to receive a contract from government, would you exempt all nine of them? Right. Um, so it should not be conveniently done. Correct. Exactly. My question for this story and all the other stories where we see processes being waived, where we're seeing uh, uh, convenience um, considered, is who holds our leaders accountable? Hmm. I'll just move right along. On the <laughs> international scene, the Eerie Face App photo oh, filter, boy. though developed in 2017, has recently gone viral, seeing thousands of persons around the world, including the celebrities, using the app to see what they will look <laughs> like in the future. Well, it's not all fun anymore. The Russian-based app allegedly has access to all your biometric information, which gives them access to your personal information at, and identity, Ron. Yet again, we are seeing another viral sensation. At first glance, what seems to be super fun and super funny, and to a great extent... Well, I don't think there's nothing funny about this app at all. Listen, Ron, First of all, listen. Come on. No, 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 listen. Come I get, on. I get an old, Javan, okay? <laughs> I don't need to know what I'm going to look like listen, when I get to that age. That's some people are curious. I think, total foolery. I think, listen, no, 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 Absolutely. no, no. Listen, yes. I think what makes it fun is, or, or crazy accurate, is the fact that it, it not only makes you look older, essentially what the app does, it takes one of your current pictures and it shows you what you look like younger, which is super accurate. Been, it blows we've, your we've, mind. But it's we've been so, there already, though. Why it, do we have to try um, to go My back thing there? is, if it's so accurate with, you know, your, your youthfulness, then... Absolutely, this is how you're going to look. I think uh, it, that's the reason why it caught on so fast. That's the reason why over 100 million people were doing it, including the celebrities. And maybe with a little bit more time, you would have been doing it too. Colleague, I think <laughs> this is a prime example of people not having nothing, anything at all to do. I mean, you, you were young once, you've been there, done that, you're getting old. <laughs> 
Let's just not go there, man. <laughs> Everyone to their own opinion. Yes, but it has um, taken off, and now, of course, it's a security issue. This is where we are. So, yeah, mm -hmm. And we have the pictures to prove it. Take a look. You know, most of these apps, um, as all the other apps mm -hmm. that we use on a daily basis, um, the terms and conditions are super lengthy, and it's a way to beguile the people. If we were to be honest, mm -hmm. nobody's taking time to read through all of that yeah. nonsense. We're and this situation, yeah. right, but this situation really teaches us that we need to read the fine prints because you can be implicated. I mean, a lot of information is now being exposed. Um, this access means that the company has an irrevocable mm -hmm. royalty license to use, adapt, publish, and distribute your content. It also encourages hacking and fraud, of course. And hear this, because of the terms and conditions of this app, they now have access to your camera, which wow. essentially allows them to record you in your privacy. Mm -mm -mm. Um, like you said, um, a lot of the things that are happening, especially if it becomes a viral sensation, we, yes. want to be, we like to be in things. But we have to be really considerate about what we're getting into and careful as well. Yeah, and just think before you do stuff, people, <laughs> really and truly. Run. <laughs> Let your head on and have some fun. Now on the arrest blotter for this week, Khalid Collins, 25, of Greenland, arrested and charged for attempted murder. He appeared before the magistrate's court and was granted bail in the amount of $90,000. Centroy Hanley, 30th East End, arrested and charged for theft. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. An identified 16-year-old male of the Valley Virgin Gorda arrested and charged for theft. He was granted bail in the amount of $5,000. Devontae Forlong, 21 of Horse Path, arrested and charged for possession and of cannabis and possession of cannabis with intent to supply. He was granted bail in the amount of $15,000. Mr. Dwight Callwood, 36 of King Garden Bay, arrested and charged for criminal damage. He was granted bail in the amount of $3,000. Another uh, busy week we see for the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. All right, viewers, uh, that's it for today's new ro news roundup. Sorry, be sure to like us on Facebook at 284 uh, Media. I'm getting tongue tied. Oh my God, <laughs> I hate right. it. Uh, 284 Media and 284 BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. And please remember if you have not as yet, go get your CCT Wait, wristbands. Yeah, um, pay $20 to top up your phone yeah. and you get a CCT wristband. Or wristband. if you're a postpaid customer, be sure to pay $20 towards your bill. Our store closes at 6 30. 6.30, yes. So you have some time to go get your wristbands and join us tonight at Island Sizzle. I'm Ron Grant. And I'm Javon Wilson. Be sure to join us every Tuesday and Friday at 3 p.m. as we deliver honest and impartial news right here on 284 News. Happy Friday, everybody. Enjoy. Have a great weekend. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast, unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico and UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages.